Hello and welcome to the BEE show, the British Esports Esports show. Um, and today we've got a very special episode. We're going to be talking all things, all things, all things student champs. So I'm here again with the lovely Saul. Saul, how are you doing today? Good, thanks. Yeah, stressful week. Well, this is for people who I guess are unaware, we're recording this the Monday, the week of champs final. So this isn't like a we've not recorded a couple of weeks before. This is the week. So very busy, busy time, lots to, lots going on. So excited for it to all be over, I guess, but excited for it to actually come around and be Champs Weekend. So it's it's a good time. It's a good time, I guess, to be alive. <laughs> yes. So we've been planning this, this year's finals for quite a long time now, actually. We wanted to like sort of jump on it early. Yeah. And I think Jonas heard the, um, in a call the other day about how we were so ahead of ourselves and all of a sudden we're back here and there's still so much to do. Yeah, it's mad. It feels like not like two minutes ago we were talking about, oh, we've got all this time for Champs Finals. What do we want to do? What kind of things do we want to change that were different from the things that we did last year? And all of a sudden, yeah, sure, yeah. it's already here. And to be fair, we've definitely done a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that has been changed a little bit. We've tweaked. Obviously, people know we're doing over two days as opposed to just the one now, uh, which is cool, I think. And it'll make, I think, the day balance out a lot nicer than especially if we have any tech delays like we did last year then hopefully that'll be mitigated a little bit because we've got a bit of a more even schedule as opposed to we've got everything packed into one day but yeah it's come around way too fast <laughs> for my liking yeah and i think it's just going to be that massive wave of relief <laughs> once that's all done yeah. and it should be good fun though because we're all getting to spend time together from wednesday yeah. So we'll have a bit more time because I think Champs last year was the first time I met quite a few people. Um, and you did as well. You started just before. Yeah, Champs. like literally just before. The, the first time I met people in person um, was one of the pre-Champs finals trips that we did down to Confetti that, that day where they were doing a lot of setup and stuff and we went down just to see how it was going to look and things. So yeah, this is like a, it's a nice time of year, I guess for me, because it holds some fond memories. <laughs> yeah. So I thought we could take this in a little bit of a slightly different direction than what people would expect for us doing like a champ special thing. And I just wanted us to talk a little bit about how from our side we are feeling about champs finals, how we've been preparing for it and just showing that sort of more production-y side of things, which I think could be quite fun for people to get that, that insight as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, do you want to start us off then, or do you want me to start and um, talk about? Um, what I've been doing? I'll go. <laughs> yeah, go for it. T tell um, us what you've been so up to, Brian, to prepare for champs finals. It's been it's been quite hectic the last few weeks. Um, my biggest sort of chunk of work didn't really come in until probably like a month ago, when um, people were sort of providing sort of information on who's coming to champs and what players are like willing to do interviews and things because my entire role for this champs finals now that I'm content manager is I'm basically looking after more of the content side of things rather than last year being just a director of interviews I'm the one completely taking the lead in all areas this time so it's been very much chaos. <laughs> trying yeah, that's that's to get, probably putting it lightly. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get everyone sort of sorted and ready and find out who's willing to be spoken to, creating schedules that fit around match and when people want to watch other things and just getting questions ready for interviews and planning out content and then also looking after... Um, making sure that Saul and Will like, breaks and things. <laughs> and we it's rest. Just, <laughs> yes, <laughs> hydration. Yeah. Like we, it's it's a bit of chaotic time, but I say most of my work is still yet to come. I think. Yeah. So how have you found it? I guess then, in terms of where you were doing things last year, is it? Have you enjoyed it more so planning this year for uh, all the stuff you're doing now? You've got all the extra kind of responsibilities and things that you've you've had to prepare for instead. Yeah, I think 
the fact that I have more control over the planning element is it makes me happy because yeah. I love to be organized. <laughs> I love to have everything planned and I like to know what's happening and when. So being able to be the person who's dictating what's happening and when it's nice. Nice. And I'm also sort of know what I'm going to expect as such. Yeah. Yeah. I found that I think more so this year as well. Um, without going straight into detail, I guess, about what I've been doing. Um, I've definitely found, yeah, that I feel like we do have a bit more control over what content, especially because now we know from last year the kind of things we can do this year and the kind of things we don't have to um, necessarily like kind of wait on and wait on the day to find out if we can do these things or not. We've, we've got a lot of, I guess, more time to figure out exactly what it was is that we wanted to do. And I think hopefully that should pay off a lot. Uh, and I know we've obviously spoken about all the kind of things that we want to be doing, as you've said. So, yeah, I'm I'm hoping a lot of the the forward planning that we've been able to do from knowing what happened last year and knowing what we can do this year uh, should be really, really good. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Yes, and um, I think so. that's the perfect sort of segue for you to speak a little bit about your side of things, which you've been doing quite a while now you've been working on this sort of stuff <laughs> yeah yeah um so i guess the main big thing that i've been working on as some of you who are watching this and listening to this might have seen um is all the the teasers the champs finals teasers for each division um that was a project um i guess cr credit where it's due um the kind of inspiration not necessarily inspiration but the kind of the thing that prompted us to Yes, we definitely want to do this. It was an idea that we've had for a, a while. It's something I've wanted to do for a while is these kind of hype videos similar to like the, the ones you see like for League of Legends for Overwatch and all these other tournament organizers that put on tournaments. You always have these like hype videos hyping up matchups, hyping up a specific event if it's the finals or whatever. Uh, and it's something I've wanted to do. And there was, um, I believe it was uh, Mince the AGSB um, yes. coach who made i either he made or did something similar i can't remember who who exactly it was but he put something similar on for the semi-finals uh and i know that got quite a lot of good reception and so that solidified in my mind like, yeah we're just going to do this because everyone loves these and from something as simple as that we can we can we can do all sorts of stuff so that was i guess where the idea spawned from initially um and so yeah it was a lot of trying to figure out exactly what questions i wanted to ask so i kind of but the I guess burden, but it's not really a burden. It was nice. It was nice to talk to all you guys. If you ever, if you are listening, you students, um, it was it was really really nice uh, to talk to you all. Uh, so burdens maybe the wrong word, but I put my, the kind of task upon myself to plan the interviews, to organize the interviews, to conduct the interviews, um, as well as then all the post production that goes into editing cutting all the best bits, making it all sound cool and things like that. So, uh, yeah, it was really, really good. I have to say I'm very impressed with the students that we do have within the the kind of the, the champ system. All of them are very, very well spoken. I have to say there's a lot of people I think of like if when I was in school and if we got asked to do this, I can imagine even me probably at the time not being maybe too confident or too sure so i'm very very impressed i guess first off that a lot of them were willing to do the interviews and a lot of them were very 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 well spoken when it came to the interview so hats off to, to you guys it was really really good to speak to you um and so yeah so we managed to get some good questions in i think we got a, a kind of broad spectrum from uh i guess the one that i think is probably the most kind of like like smack talky slash hype is probably the division one uh overwatch video that one yeah. yeah that one was really really good i really enjoyed that one actually um that one was was um it kind of came about by accident almost because it wasn't that i i i kind of did say to them oh if you want to do some smack talk then then do because it's encouraged and do it. but um but yeah I'm, I'm it requires obviously both sides to be able to do it because if both if one side does it and one doesn't then it kind of uh, doesn't necessarily work for kind of the the storytelling that you want the video to have um so i really really appreciate both teams kind of got stuck in <laughs> and and kind of uh, dished out a little bit with for that it was really really good um and so you've got 
videos like that and then kind of on the other side you've got some there's some of the nicer ones where um i think of like the league of legends uh ones where both of them were kind of like you know we're, n we're not necessarily afraid of the other team but you know we have great respect for them we understand what they have going forward and we were ready to fight against it so it was nice to kind of have i feel like a good contrast of different storylines that you could see due to the answers that people were able to give um and yeah i think the it sounds like the videos i guess kind of to wrap this point up the videos did get a lot of good reception i think a lot of people enjoyed them which was good i think a lot of people appreciated that we did them which is good and hopefully it's something we can do a bit more often i don't know exactly how it'd work it, it definitely we obviously definitely couldn't do it week to week because i'm far too busy and i'm the only one <laughs> who would be working on this as like a project but i would like to i think maybe sprinkle these in a bit more throughout the year as opposed to saving it all and and, and blowing it all in on, on champs finals i think it would be nice to sprinkle them throughout the year especially if it's some matchups where there is a bit of history there is a bit of a story there um yeah i think definitely something to do more so over the course of this year i think that's something that this is this has taught me as well yeah and honestly like when you first sent the draft of the um qm and gcs one we all i know all of us were just like this is incredible <laughs> all of us are such nerds yeah for our own little areas and stuff but i think we've now grown as a team to where we're all getting like nerdy over each other's stuff which is really great but i think yeah it's just so nice to be able to see teams who competed last year coming back again like trying to come for the titles again or people who have like made friends with each other yeah. through the champs it's such a nice thing to see regardless of the smack talk <laughs> yeah yeah that was that was one of the things i definitely noticed a lot was, was some of the, from the questions that i asked you could tell a lot of them were like oh yeah well, you know we we're, we're friends with the other team we speak to the other team quite a lot that that was something that was quite a common um response that i got for for some of the questions so it's really nice to hear that obviously like without tooting our own horn that it's nice that through this kind of uh, tournament structure that it does offer the opportunity for these kids to make friends outside of their own uh, kind of school environment and with people who obviously have similar interests because if you're playing the playing all playing the game together then of course you share at least that as a common interest so yeah it's been really really nice and I think the other thing I'm really grateful for as well is that when I asked the question about what would you say to students who wanted to join in with student champs and maybe don't really know where to start or haven't started yet and maybe nervous about getting started uh the like 99 percent of the answers was you just go do it because it's loads of fun and we've really enjoyed it and so there's no reason why other people couldn't enjoy it so yeah it's it's been really really i think a, a positive insight i guess from my end just to see what these these guys are up to and what what the what they're all think about the kind of the, the tournament structure as a whole and how they've been getting on it's been it's been really really nice so yeah hopefully i hope that continues as, as we continue on with the champs in years to come yes definitely so um just sort of an add-on from that really um i know we can't predict the future <laughs> we can't predict what's going to happen but um did you want to speak a little bit about what your workload is probably going to look like finals because i know obviously everyone's going to be focused on the the matches that's the main event yep. obviously that's what people come to watch but it'd be nice to sort of shed light on what we're going to be up to behind the scenes yeah absolutely so i guess from my perspective um a lot of it i guess will come down to what's going on in the day because essentially my plan is uh trying to get a lot of the short form content uh, that I want to try and capture or that we want to try and capture uh, done in kind of a big bulk at this uh, student champs finals because it's a good opportunity obviously as we've said it's not we don't really see each other very often in person never mind like in this kind of sense where it's us plus all these other uh, hundreds of people who, who will be there so I think this is like a perfect time for things like TikTok, Instagram, uh, even like short YouTube videos and things like that that, that can come about as a result of the content that we can make during this weekend and so my main plan will be on top of similar to last year where i was down in in the basement it's not it's, it's nicer than a basement obviously but <laughs> down in in the basement of the of the confetti uh kind of uh studio on that uh doing the highlights and capturing the highlights ready for 
highlights videos to come out then after the fact of the uh, student champs finals uh not only will that be happening um i'll also then be in, in amongst games and in between games and maybe even during some games when it's if it's quieter periods and things are kind of going on i'll be probably up and about in the gallery TikToking and doing all sorts of stuff gosh i'd, I'd never expected to be some sort of tiktok person when it came to to signing up for this job i have to say but i mean things seem to be going well for tiktok i think we've yeah. we've, we've uh, done a really good job so I, there's a lot of short form content i want to try and capture and it'll be really nice especially from uh, if anyone's seen the insomnia uh, one that we did it for the tiktok where we just we just went around and we just asked questions to to random people uh, to see what the thoughts were on uh, if you the, it was if you could play a video game with anyone alive or dead who would it be and why um loads of questions i guess similar to that so we'll see what kind of responses we get uh, from people so if you if you are around uh champs finals uh and you see me walking around with a camera then be prepared to, to answer a question because i might be coined for you um and then yeah on top of that i think there's there's probably just a lot of other like short form things that we can do uh not necessarily just like asking people questions but There'll be other bits and pieces as well on top of me running around and doing highlights and things. So it's probably I'll be running around with my phone a lot of the time recording things uh, is the gist of, of all of that, basically. Yes, you'll be very busy. Yeah. <laughs> what will you be up to, Bryony? Um, I, I would say I've got a slightly easier role than running around. Um, but I'd say I'm going to be in charge of doing like the bulk of... I wouldn't say post-game interviews because we're already looking at doing those with players on stage and with the casters and things, but more of like a an informal interview sort of thing. Um, so this year, instead of being in, in the basement, I feel like we need to provide photos. Yeah. <laughs> uh, insert photo above my head somewhere of the basement. the basement. I'm sure I'll have a photo somewhere. Um, so instead of me being sort of downstairs... Um, in the metronome building, um, in the in a, it was a very dark room with like two spotlights. Yes. On um, waxing um, for probably like thirteen hours. Long time. Yeah. I've got a TV studio this year, which is like it's not in the metronome or confetti X. It's like across the road a little bit. So I am going to be a little bit away from the event. However, the place has windows. Which I'm excited oh, about. Yep. Um, and we're making it more like a homey, homely sort of set. There's going to be like a sofa. There's going to be like little plants and table. And it's going to be quite nice. It's going to be quite chill. And basically, I'm inviting people throughout the day. Um, so I'm going to be having players after games to do like match reviews sort of things. Um, I've got teachers, I've got people from national staff and the NatSpec colleges coming to speak to me about inclusivity. I've got casters, I've got production. I'm just bringing a bunch of people together at different times across the weekend to learn more about them and also to sort of have a natter, <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be spending most of my time doing sort of like short interviews with people but i will also be sort of zooming around i mean to check on you guys and make sure you're fed and watered Please. down in the basement <laughs> yeah it's our, our daily dose of sunlight whenever we can yeah. yeah i think it should be interesting then i think from that because last year obviously like you said we have we had interviews with people but they were more so the kind of the after the show uh interviews where it was more like oh focused around the the games themselves and what happened and the interviews surrounding that so this year i think it will be interesting that we'll have that plus then also your interviews which will be more kind of generalized and relaxed it won't be yeah. exactly like the post kind of uh game interviews that we had last year so i think it'd be interesting and again it's some nice uh content that we can hopefully use and that i'm sure if if students are up for it for the interviews i'm sure students will like seeing themselves in these bits of content because we'll, we'll be using this kind of stuff all the time for for all sorts of stuff both educational and fun and all sorts of stuff so yeah should be good do you have any like fun like 
questions planned or anything any like extra bits and pieces or is it more just gonna be kind of as and when it comes up maybe you'll ask those kind of questions so i've got like a rough idea of like your standard questions that are like focused on what that person does and their role and what they're doing at the event sort of stuff however i do have planned some like rapid quick fire questions sort nice. of things so it's not going to be like quiz it's just going to be like favorite esports title favorite esports player it's going to be like just random stuff like that and i i'm just tempted to start the interview like that just sort of loosen the people up because yeah. i know because i'll be in a tv studio there's going to be a ridiculous amount of lights and there's going to be like three or four broadcast camera yeah intimidating a bit scary people yeah. might be a bit scared <laughs> so i want to try and ease people into it but also it's like um people i'm speaking to some people who i've spoken to before and like, i always tell them it's just a chat don't think of it as a formality yes there's cameras yes there's whatever but we're just gonna have a chat there's no set structure and things will just come up and we will talk about them like I just want to ease people into it. So I'm going to throw a bit of fun in there for people. Yeah, nice. That's pretty good. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest things I wanted to ask you was what you're most excited about for the event, if you can pinpoint one thing. Oh, um, I think for me, the thing maybe I'm most excited about or kind of the, the area that I'm most excited about is... I think this kind of short form content, so like the the just trying to speak to people and just trying to see what kind of responses and answers we get out of people. I really enjoy doing those. And I enjoy doing it in Somnia, to be fair, uh, when we were doing that. And so I'm really excited, I think, just to, to get to speak to people. I think I don't, being the kind of job role that I'm in and being someone who just sits in this chair like 80% of my day, as it is anyway, work and kind of uh, hobby Times. i'll just sit in this chair and, and play games or whatever um it'll be nice to just speak to people about what they get up to and what kind of games they play and what their opinions are on certain things so i think that's probably what i'm most excited about is just to just to almost like almost just to see people <laughs> again i guess uh but yeah just to speak to people and see exactly what kind of uh things we can do with this short form content because we've had a lot of success with a lot of different stuff so it's about now i guess where can that success take us on what's kind of the next step and can we come up with anything while we're here at champs finals that's probably it for me what about you what are you, what are you most excited for so sort of the same thing it's a bit cheesy but it's just seeing people and like especially the british esports team because i think it's been a very long time since we were all in one place at the same time yeah yeah, yeah. I was, Last I mean, finals, we missed a bunch of people down to co like due to COVID. Yeah, it's just going to be nice to see people that I haven't seen in a while, and we're doing some like team bonding things. We're going to go out for dinner. We're going to do some like go karting, <laughs> racing. It's it's going to be good fun, and I think just being able to spend time with people I haven't seen for a little while and like good friends and things is probably going to be my highlight. Yeah, it should be really nice. And like you say, we've got a lot of extra stuff, I guess, and a lot of extra time outside of Champs Finals for us to all natter and, and get together and, and do some things. So yeah, it should be nice. It'll be really nice. Oh, so, I think cool. that just about wraps us up. Uh, yes, of course, does. before we finish, we've got a classic uh, segment of this or that. So this time, Brian, I don't know how well-versed you are on this topic uh, but I think it's still something you might be able to answer regardless of whether you have a strong opinion on it or not. So um, for those who know or care, uh, this week is very exciting, on top of it being Champs Finals, uh, because it's also uh, SGDQ Week, uh, which is a speedrunning event. Uh, they do uh, like twice a year. So you've got Summer Games. This is Summer Games done quick, and then you've got uh, awesome games done quick which is earlier on in the year so it's basically a charity event focused around speedrunning games and they raise money for charity basically uh, and i always really enjoy it because speedrunning is one of my like little 
it's not really a hobby because I don't do it, but it's one of my, like, it's something I just like, I really enjoy watching. So I guess in celebration of that, uh, the uh, this or that question is a bit, I guess, focused around that. It's, it's the speedrun edition <laughs> oh. of this or that. So, Bryony, whether or not you do watch any speedruns or interest in that kind of thing at all, would you have any preference or do you have any preference over speedruns that involve glitches and breaking the game completely or breaking the game in ways that obviously the game shouldn't be played in? Or would you prefer speedruns that are full, like the way the game should be played with maybe some added like speed tech in there to make the game maybe just a bit faster or to move a bit faster or whatever? Do you have any sort of preference one way or the other? Yes. I would say glitchless. Okay. It's probably... For me, like, shows more skill as such. Um, so I've seen people trying to speed run um, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Um, and literally the only way you can do that is to break the game. Yeah, I think I've seen However, those. You just, like, jump, like, a boundary and, you like, the game's over in, yeah. like, five minutes. <laughs> yeah. And However, the game's pretty broken anyway. Like, it's... I'm at the moment I haven't been able to play it in a little while because um I my save I'm stuck inside Freddy and it won't let me out. Oh. <laughs> oh. If he um runs out of power he kills you. Oh. So I'm yes, that's it's no good, just then. sort of an inevitable death. Um but no, back to this. I think using glitches is sort for me it's sort of a cop out, controversial opinion there. Um, insert clip of me talking about how you shouldn't cheat in that <laughs> video that we did with um, Morgan and Will. It's, I think more credibility is given to you if you do it without glitching it or cheating as such. Like, yes, it might not be entirely the fastest time ever, but it's a bit more credible to me that you've put in that skill and time and effort to do that and i think yeah glitching for me is just a little bit iffy yeah on doing stuff that way okay fair enough see i i guess in some ways have a similar mindset to you but for that mindset i lean more towards the glitch or i guess it's that way the glitch side of speedrun so yes i'd agree with you that 100 percent sometimes it does take more skill to do the glitchless way and sometimes it takes more dedication and time because that's not necessarily the the fastest way to finish a game um but the one thing that really does intrigue me when it comes to speedruns and it comes to these glitch these speedruns that involve glitches in the first place is how on earth these glitches were even discovered it's there's some madness yeah. like speedruns where it's they like they go to this certain pixel and they line themselves up and then you can jump and suddenly you've, you've fallen 30 feet under the floor and then you're in the next like load zone and things and you've, you've skipped five levels and it's like yeah. who who discovered this <laughs> how how did this happen so it's always and so into be fairness as well with some of the glitches it uh they take like a lot of skill to execute i guess in a sense as well so there is definitely skill in performing the glitches like the the picture that i've got on the uh the little this or that uh, board there is the the backwards long jump from from mario 64 which i've tried to do and i can't do i just can't do it so maybe i just need to spend some more time giving that a go but it always impresses me that people find these glitches i guess first of all and then incorporate that into a speed run so i always really enjoy seeing people break games especially if it's a game that like i played when i was younger or something and i'm watching someone speed run it's like oh this is great someone's just breaking this game completely this is not how i remember playing this game at all so yeah, yeah I, I appreciate glitches glitchless runs and they are definitely really really good and definitely show a lot of skill but i do like the glitches the glitches runs i think a little bit more just because more more so from the like the curiosity factor of how on earth did this even get found in the first place it's it's crazy it's crazy to me yeah I think the biggest problem is if you find a glitch and you make it public, I'm talking about security breach again. Someone found a glitch to reset the timer um, to before 6am so you could save. 
Um, because after six a.m., you if you die, that's it. Right. Okay. Um, and it was such a common thing, and it was everywhere, and they patched it. <laughs> so that's with glitches and things. The likelihood is it's going to be patched at some point. Yes. Yeah. If if it's so. definitely, especially like in this case where it is a newer game. Uh, old games, obviously, you kind of just yeah. stuck with what you're given. But yeah, new, newer games, there's, there's been a lot of instances like that where it's like, oh, here's a little speed. I think El- Elden Ring was a big one. I remember when people were speedrunning Elden Ring and they would do. there was a certain method to doing it and all of a sudden they bring out a patch and it like nerfs like some sort of weapon damage or it nerfs something or other and suddenly that way of speedrunning the game is like totally like irrelevant now because it's just not even possible the same way. So uh, yeah, that does happen. It does definitely happen. Uh, I guess a follow-up question then, Bryony, before we finish. If you could speedrun any game of your choice, is there a game you'd like to speedrun or or like to learn a speedrun for? I don't know. (laughs) I think I'm not... I say it's never really appealed to me Mm. to speedrun. I like to sort of enjoy the game and take the time. And, like, I know you can speedrun like the batman arkham games however what's the fun in doing that because the riddler trophies and the riddles are the most fun part of it yeah that was i'm pretty sure they were one of the first games i the the arkham asylum definitely yeah was the first game i 100 percented because of of all the riddler trophies and stuff i really enjoyed doing all that but yeah i think i mean now i have because i've already got a platinum trophy for it um I I try and speed run it. I'll try and learn to speed run Arkham Asylum yeah. now that I've played it through properly once. How about you? Um, so there's, there is there's one that I did try to learn the speed run for. Uh, and I did like semi well. I couldn't go, but I'd have to like relearn it all again because it was a while back when I was trying to do it. Uh, and I I never really perfected it. I the way I practiced it was I did like a level at a time. I was like, right, I can do this level, do this level, do this, and but then I couldn't it all into a nice little sequence but it's the uh spider-man game for the playstation one um where there's it's i picked it mostly because i there's a lot of speed runs that take even though it's a speed run it's still like an hour like is the fastest time and that's like world record pace and it's like well if i'm doing it i'm still gonna be like two and a half hours or something daft so i'm i can't waste time i'd say waste time i can't spend time learning that because that's i've just ain't got time for that so the Spider-Man one was a relatively short one. I think it's like 15, 16 minutes or something is the world record. And so it's like, oh, well, if I figure this out, maybe I can do it in like 20 minutes. And that, that'd be like a nice little achievement. Um, and there's quite a lot of cool. It kind of blended that um, idea that I enjoy of speedruns where it's like, yes, uh, you can. there's a lot of just like movement tech that you can do in the game to speed yourself up that's not... I guess intended but it is like it's just built into the game and it's, it's a different way you can move so there's a way you can like when you do the web swinging uh if you web swing and then jump it cancels the web swing and then you swing again and it's faster than just like normal swinging so that was like a cool little thing but then it also has some glitches in as well where you can like oh you, you clip through the ceiling here and it like the floor like deletes itself so you can kind of like zip under the floor yeah. and suddenly you're at like a different point in the game so the, it was a nice mix a nice balance of all the kind of things that i liked about speedruns so maybe i'll get maybe i'll learn that again maybe that'll when if we ever run out of things to do at champs finals we can have a, a sold speedruns spider-man <laughs> section yeah. <laughs> maybe that's that's a plan for next year <laughs> definitely so thank you very much today Saul. um and thank you to everyone that is watching or listening um, so make sure you guys tune in to the student champs over on the British Esports Twitch channel over the weekend. Um, there's going to be lots of amazing games across the entire weekend. We've got Rocket League, we've got Overwatch, we've got League of Legends, we've got FIFA, and we've got Valorant. We've got everything there. Yes, yes. I'm pretty sure <laughs> we've that got is everything. Much more than last year. <laughs> if there is more, um, then tune in because you'll find out, yeah. and we'll find out at the same time, probably. <laughs> Lots of exciting stuff, lots of amazing talent. And yeah, everyone at British Esports has been working really hard, especially Alice, Jazz and Elliot, our resident champs experts. Yeah, could not um, be done. Everyone's been working no. so hard and it'd be really great for you guys to tune in. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Whenever you're watching this and we'll see you guys very soon. Yep. Bye-bye. See you at Chance Finals, boys. Bye.